So it's been a year since the Batman teaser trailer dropped and it is arguably one of the best teaser trailers ever released in general. The movie is coming out March 4th, 2022, so around the beginning of next year, even though we should have had it by now or at least had it by the end of this year. Even though I am keeping my composure right now, I can't really contain my excitement. I'm trying to my hardest, but it is very, very hard. When this film comes out, I'm going to see it three times in a row. Opening night, opening day, and then the day after. And maybe a couple times after that. Many people don't know this, but when The Dark Knight Rises came out in theaters, I saw that movie 10 times. When The Dark Knight came out, I was a little bit younger, so I only saw it about four times. If I could go back in time and be the age I am now, during the release of that film, I could guarantee you I would have saw it probably double, 20 times in theaters. I'm that nuts. I'm that crazy. So if this movie ends up being very, very good, you can guarantee I will see this movie about 10 times, if not more. Any film starring Batman, most of their billion dollar box office success does come from me because I made up about $500 million of their income. Most YouTube channels that have dropped this trailer, like IGN or Warner Brothers or whoever else, most of them are counting over millions of views, of course. On the official Warner Brothers pictures, the main YouTube channel that they have, it is sitting at 32 million views. I am pretty sure I have accounted for at least a million of those 32 million views, if not a little bit more. There was a point where I was watching this trailer once a day. I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm I'm absolutely not joking. Now, a couple days ago at CinemaCon, I guess they showed off some more footage of this movie, and it's not being released for the public. It is the same night that the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer dropped. And it's probably a good thing they didn't drop a trailer of their own, because I think the Spider-Man movie is just so hyped up right now that nothing in the world when it comes to cinema will beat Spider-Man as of right now. It's one of the most hyped films to ever be created, especially superhero-wise. But Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson talked about some of the things that we could expect in the movie, how the movie will feel, and even some of the footage was somewhat released in the sense of just simply talking about it. So I'll read this paragraph here where it says, for some reason, Batman has has always stood as one of the major characters of the 20th century, Pattinson says. He says it is radically different from other Batman movies. Reeves then says we haven't seen anything grounding it the way Year One does. It's not an origin story, but it is Batman in his early days. Footage shows Batman beating up goons set in red light, explosions, police officers, and dark chaos. He's really working out his rage, Pattinson said. All the fights seem very personal. He uses various weapons to beat down enemies. A shot shows Andy Serkis as Alfred. The Batmobile drives with flames coming from its exhaust. We can't wait for you to see the Batman in theaters next year, Reeves says. Now, I'm not necessarily going to be speculating here. I think more so what I want to do in this video is I want to give you my opinion on what I would like to see in this film. Whether or not my expectations will come true, whether I'll be even more surprised what's gonna happen, who knows? Being a Batman fan, there's always something that you want, or any fan in general of anything, where there's always something you feel like you should expect being a loyal fan. Now keep in mind here, I'm a storyteller by nature, and I've written many, many stories in my life, and I actually have the plot details of a Batman film of my own that, uh, it's classified information can't release it right now at this time to the public. So what I want to see from this Batman movie is not entirely the same to what I would want to see in my own Batman movie. The day will come where the information for my Batman film will maybe rise on the internet and something will come out of it, but for now, that has to stay a secret. So what do I want from this Batman film? What do I think would be cool to see in this movie? How do I want the world to pan out? And how many movies are there going to be in general? Well, the rumor is that there's gonna be three. There's gonna be a trilogy of Pattinson films directed by Matt Reeves. Now here's the interesting thing is, 
Where do you move on from here? Because you clearly have the Riddler and Penguin, but from what I've heard, Penguin is only in it for about five to 10 minutes, maybe even less. Riddler is more than clearly the main focus of the film. So after battling someone who challenges Bruce's intelligence, where do you move on from here? Do you go for more of like a physical challenge in the next movie, like a Bane, more of a mentally challenge, kind of like a Joker, or do you find a way to mix both of them and continue the story from there. DC, as we all know, is in this state of uncertainty and confusion. We still as fans, and I'm pretty sure even then, the higher ups in Warner Brothers and DC don't even know what the hell is going on with their universes. They can't get on the same page about restoring the Snyderverse. They can't get on the same page about continuing the future in another direction. They can't get on the same page about where the new Superman movies are going to fit into all this. They can't get on the same page of what the Batman is to the overall DCEU. When the Flash does whatever he's going to do in his own movie and he's going to create this weird multiversal event where when he goes back to his original state things have changed, do I think that from that situation the Flash is going to create a world where Ben Affleck's Batman doesn't exist to him but it is indeed Robert Pattinson's Batman? No, I do not think that is the case at all. I do think that Matt Reeves' Batman series is going going to be a type of Dark Knight trilogy. It is going to be a completely separated storyline on its own that has no other crossover event with any other DC project or the Justice League in general. The one crossover I would like to see though is Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. Maybe there is a way you can make Joaquin's Joker the main Joker of the Robert Pattinson world. By this first trailer we got for the new Batman film, when you compare compare it to Joaquin Phoenix's Joker movie, you do kind of get the sense that the worlds could combine and that Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, his mentality and the world that was built around him could fit into Matt Reeves' Batman universe. Now I know there's probably a couple of canonized issues within the movies, probably how the origin story for Robert Pattinson's Batman works, if they're even going to deal with that in general, maybe it doesn't flesh well. But I still do think until we get more information, there is definitely a possibility that you could cross those two over, and I'd love to see it happen. Penguin. Colin Farrell, great choice. Can't believe how much it doesn't even look like Colin Farrell. It just looks like someone completely different in general. Even though he's not in this movie a lot, and we will probably be seeing him in the future films, what I would like to see from Penguin is much more of a gangster type of profile, other than the cowardly Penguin he plays whenever Batman comes around. The Penguin we saw in the Batman Arkham games is a prime example of how Penguin can or should be. But now you have to take it from the perspective of Matt Reeves' world, where this world looks much more grounded. And I'm going to keep comparing it. It does feel much more realistic like the Dark Knight trilogy was. Now, as most of you know, in Batman's early stages, Gotham is overrun by the mob and Batman has to, you know, run the mob out of town essentially and it would be nice to see an iteration of Penguin who is like most members of the Mafia. When you look at the Falcone family or the Marooni family or the Bertinelli family in the comic books, they're always run by strong, hard-willed men who usually don't let themselves get too scared by the appearance of Batman. I think Penguin needs that a little bit more. There's no question that Batman will terrify you in every way. No matter how much of a hard-boiled dude you are, Batman's gonna scare you, especially when you're doing something against the law. Penguin will absolutely fear the bat, but I think Penguin needs to be a little more hardened in the fact that you know, for example, I've been running my own crime ring for years. I'm not going to let this freak in a bat suit who's been scouring around buildings for the past year stop me from doing what I've been doing for 10, 15 years. If you gave Penguin kind of like a godfather feel, I think that would be pretty neat. Now, Andy Serkis as Alfred, I think is a super good choice. I do think in his older age, Andy Serkis definitely looks like an Alfred, but it's going to be a different type of Alfred. See, Michael Caine was the traditional. Would you like some coffee, Master Bruce? Where then you move on to Jeremy Irons, who's a little more rugged,
rugged, can take care of himself, and kind of like snaps back at Bruce Wayne every now and then. They got like a snarky relationship and it's fun. Andy Serkis I think will be more similar to Jeremy Irons' Alfred, but what I would love to see from Andy Serkis is he's the type of Alfred who actually trained Bruce Wayne in a specific fighting style. Because as we all know, Bruce Wayne went around the entire world to learn multiple different fighting styles. And then learning from Alfred, because Alfred was in the military at one point, learning from him a different type of fighting style, different things that Bruce Wayne can use in the field as Batman. I want to see Andy Serkis as Alfred as the type of Alfred that if there's an intruder in Wayne Manor or the Batcave, this guy just whips out a shotgun and blows blows his legs off if, if he needs to. That's the type of Alfred I want to see. Even though Batman himself won't kill, Alfred doesn't keep himself to those same standards. Alfred would mentally be more prepared to take a life than Bruce Wayne would be. As for the Riddler, there's a chance to consider Riddler one of Batman's most deadliest villains in his rogues gallery. When you usually think of Batman's villains, you think of Joker, you think of Bane, you think of Ra's al Ghul. I do think Riddler has been taken down a notch to just this fool who spews out riddles that Batman solves within seconds and then punches him in the face and when Riddler wakes up he's in Arkham Asylum again. And I would like to see a Riddler who, and look, you know, this is DC for you. It's, it's gonna be much darker. There's a chance to make the Riddler someone who says, look, if you don't solve my riddles, you see this building here? Yeah, there's 500 people in this building. You have two minutes to solve the riddle. If you can't figure it out, I blow up the building. And that that's that. The Riddler wants to prove that he not only is he the smartest man in the world, but he wants to prove that no one can beat him, including the Batman. And Batman would be his biggest nemesis because Batman knows how to solve nearly every issue. So the Riddler would have to go to some insane extents to basically prove himself higher than Batman. He will do whatever he has to do to prove to Gotham City that no one can trump him, in his mind especially. Now I'm gonna put these two in one, the city of Gotham and Bruce Wayne Batman. In this trailer, it does look like it's a much darker Gotham, and I mean, Gotham in general is a dark place to be. There's a scene in Batman Begins where Bruce Wayne and Rachel Dawes drive to like the downtown area of Gotham, and it looks disgusting, filled with, with no future and no hope. There's a chance to make the entirety of Gotham that one scene from Batman Begins. When we watch this film, Gotham City needs to be an absolute cesspool, just overrun by criminals and murderers and no good doers in general. I think that needs to be shown in Bruce's personality and it needs to be shown in the way Batman handles Gotham at night. Now based off of something Robert Pattinson apparently said is that this Batman is going to be much different than what we've seen before. He's still dealing with his anger and his rage. So every time we see Batman get into a fight with somebody, he's taking it personally. And I mean, that was pretty much shown in the trailer when he beats the living hell out of that thug. And I think to live in this version of Gotham, that is exactly how Batman is supposed to be. He's supposed to be much more darker, much more grittier. You could argue with me that Batman is always that way, no matter what Gotham or what version you take him from. And it's true. I mean, the Dark Knight trilogy, for its own right, is pretty dark itself. The Batman vs. Superman is dark as well, because it's a much different take on Batman. He's, you know, he's killing in his older age. He just doesn't really care anymore. But this has the opportunity to show that if Gotham is this level brutality, let's say, then Robert Pattinson's Batman has to be this level of brutality, if not higher. We all take for granted the criminal nature of Gotham City. We all have seen it in movies and comic books 
in TV shows, in animated movies, in video games. But over the years, we've slowly moved away from the attributes that Gotham City does have to show because we as the viewer already know what Gotham City is. But for the first time in a long time, this is their chance to show how awful Gotham City is and how their version of Batman counteracts the criminality of Gotham City. Those are some of the bigger things I'm really looking for in this Batman film and hopefully some of these things do come into fruition. There are other things that I do hope for as well, but to keep this video not as long as I could honestly make it, I'm just gonna keep it at that. That's not to say I am obviously excited for Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman and Jeffrey Wright's Commissioner Gordon. And there are certain things I wanna see from their characters too. But with that being said, if you are just like me and you can't wait for this Batman film, make sure to leave a like and to hit that subscribe button. And also too, make sure you keep up that excitement until March 4th of 2022 when the movie finally drops. All right guys, that is it for this one and I will talk to you all very soon.